Two, one. Bonjour and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show. I'm Dayon Kovacevic. He's Ramon Foster. I'm in Montreal. He's in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Somewhat comparable locales, I'm sure. Hi, Moan. Look at my backdrop and look at yours. <laughs> This is, if you've never been up here, can't recommend it strongly mm-hmm. enough. This is the heart of beautiful Centre-Ville, uh, Montreal. That yeah. back there, Moan, can you see the green hill? I, I see it. Yes, I okay. do. That is Montreal. It's the mountain that overlooks Montreal. the city. My knowledge is that there are only three cities in the world mm. that have a big, big mountain or hill overlooking them directly and i don't know the third one but i do i do know that two of them are montreal and of course pittsburgh with mount washington why would you know that dk i don't remember i just had somebody look it up or something (laughs) just off top i'm gonna go with maybe denver nah well (laughs) denver's mountains are there that's a good call but they're kind of way back you know it's not it's not really the same i thought i was terrible with useless facts i'm not saying it's useless but no random facts like i would have never ever thought to look that up but i appreciate the sentiment of letting me know that because now you got me intrigued about Montreal, okay? Because you sold me before we did this show that yeah, you need to it's, come visit. It's it's special. And, and and anybody who's never been up here, don't fear the whole French thing. Most everybody here is bilingual. And if I, I took eight years of French in college, oh, wow. it does me no good. Okay. Un, until you learn a, a, another language conversationally, all you're doing is going through your head Processing. for each individual word. Yeah. So but, but, I say, je veux un café. <laughs> you, you know what I say to you? Bragging huh. camp. Because that's all you've been doing since you got on right now is bragging. This, 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 is, this is accurate. Yeah, okay. This, I guess this, we got to do something here since DK's got all the medals now. Well, speaking of uh, bragging, and not that Cam Hayward is the bragging type. No, nah, he's not. He's the worker he, type. He's, he, he's the worker type. He's the doer way yeah. more than the talker. However, Cam does expect, and rightly so, a measure of respect for his accomplishments. Yeah. Okay? And he recognizes correctly that what he does on the football field isn't always valued or appreciated properly, particularly by those on the outside. So let's talk about our favorite (laughs) viewer slash listener from yesterday's show, Cam Hayward, and what he had to say about it. Oh, my. So it was about 7 o'clock Eastern, almost 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, I get a text message from a buddy. I light up when I see my teammates text me, man. And I still lit up when I saw the message. And it was it was very cordial conversation that we had. <laughs> it was uh, it was discussing the ranking that Jeremy Fowler released yesterday. That was a culmination of uh, execs, scouts, front office people that ranked guys. And yesterday they did the cam. They did the tackles. And I get a text at 647 Central yesterday that reads, saw your show. Thank you, Cam, for the view, okay? I ain't five, I ain't four, I ain't three. It's pick your poison at one or two. And I said, oh, yeah. Pick your poison at one or two. And we know where one was or who he is, and that was Aaron Donald. And but he's he, saying to himself, you know who two is. Two is himself, Cam Hayward. And after discussing it with him, uh, well, my initial rebuttal was, did, did I not give you your credit saying that? I know the vot- motivation and respect of everything that you see and do. So that it was a very respectful conversation. It wasn't a, hey, you guys suck. It wasn't that. It was just, you know, again, I told you, Cam is cerebral and his movements and how he play and how his career is. So because of that, I appreciate him, you know, reaching out to kind of say one, he watched it and two, give his reason for how he felt. Oh, hang on. Let's keep this real here. Okay. Because at, at one point in that segment yesterday, both you and I brought up Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah. And in a very positive light. And again, that's fair to yeah. Simmons and what he's become in the league in a short period of time. Mm hmm. And we kind of, both of us were like, Jeffrey Simmons and Cam, you know? And I think I have a feeling here, knowing Cam, uh, the way we both do, that that would be the kind of thing that would maybe go, oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. There's a one and a two. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 leave it there and let's leave all these Jeffrey Simmons types <laughs> out of the equation. All right. Yeah. One hundred percent. And 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 again, I told Cam, I was like, you're welcome to come on. I think he will at some point if given that opportunity. His schedule is crazy because he's still training and whatnot. But with that being said, let's. So, you, you know, I covered the Titans here in Tennessee. And uh, initially, when I found out who Jeffrey Simmons was and they played him and everything else, and I've been studying him and watching him, I actually said I correlate uh, Jeffrey Simmons to Cam Hayward. But it's funny, Cam, just uh, uh, <laughs> what's his name? He actually correlates himself to Fletcher Cox. Like Jeffrey Simmons correlates himself to Fletcher Cox. And I'm like, if you watch yourself, you're a mix between Cam Hayward and Indomitian Sue with the attitude that you play with. I did that comparison a while back after I figured out what Jeffrey Simmons was as a player. I think he's Cam 2.0 in the sense that they play very similar. So I can understand what he what he was getting at. Cam saying he was number two. You know what he also said? We had a different conversation. He sent me a stat line. That read off, and I sent it to you guys to show that, well, look, Cam numbers in 2021 are higher than Jeffrey Simmons. Cam numbers, as far as quarterback sacks, were higher. Forced fumbles, Cam had that too. Cam also had an interception. The numbers don't lie. And this is the other side of it too, and I was like, well, maybe they're going with Jeffrey Simmons because of his age. He's younger. He's 24. He'll be That that shouldn't matter. That shouldn't matter. And see, that's what Cam said. In the moment, the moment is the ranking for something like this. The way Jeremy Fowler described the way he posed this question to the NFL executives and evaluators that he interviewed was right now. It wasn't potential. It wasn't past performance. It was right now. Yeah, 100%. And I, like I said, my mindset was because I, I went in depth into thinking like, okay, what, what could be offensive about being one through five? And I know the idea that you want to be number one. And I respect Cam for his approach to it and love that approach to it too. But I said, well, maybe they're giving Jeffrey Simmons a pass because he's younger and he's did a good little bit. So they kind of see it in a different light. I said, okay, you hit your 30s. They start to look at you different. You know how the 30s are in the NFL. Perception. They look at you di- And you know mm-hmm. what Cam said? To your point, the age don't matter. Guess what Cam said immediately after? He said, mm-hmm. well, they don't do it to Aaron Donald. I said, that's true. And I can see why you push back at these guys that 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 write this type of stuff and have this type of stuff to say. Because if you're going to correlate it, correlate it to him, too. Don't just make it, well, the first statement in, in Cam's write-up was even after his 30s, he's continually playing at a high level. Don't say that about me if you're not going to say it about him. And yeah. I feel Cam on that because the league will write you out when you start to hit those 30s. Yeah, well, and remember that AD was the one floating – out there after the Ram season, whether or not he might retire or whatever, and still age doesn't get attached uh, to AD at all. Um, I, I think that where Cam is concerned, though, you said, Ramon, just a, a few seconds ago that numbers don't matter. or, or it, it do. It, no, no, no. You said, that, yeah, you said that numbers do matter. But I also feel like when it comes to interior down linemen on yeah. either side of the football, yep. the numbers are just so difficult. They and are. And when, when if I guarantee you, that if you took, let's say, John Mitchell, mm-hmm. okay, Coach Mitch just sits there with video yeah. of Cam and Jeffrey Simmons and, and, and puts them side by side and take mm-hmm. out all the, imp- you know, make him as impartial as he could possibly be. Yep. In that, in that, he's he's certainly capable of that. This is a yes, pretty strong yes, willed individual, okay? And say, evaluate the performances of both of these defensive linemen within the context of what the team needed Mm -hmm. in that given game. And then you go to situations like in Minneapolis when the Steelers are getting gashed. And it sounds ironic that I'd bring that game up, but that was the one where Cam was just told, just go wherever the Vikings are running. Mm -hmm. Just don't worry about your position. We just need a tourniquet here. Stop the damn bleeding. Okay, Dalvin Cook has 500 yards against us. Just make it stop. So they're moving Cam. They're making Cam a nose tackle. They're moving him over here, over there. This one of those things wasn't even a position because he's that guy. Because he's that guy. Could you have asked that of Jeffrey Simmons at his age right now? I don't think so. No, No. that's what I'm talking about here. It's a right now thing. It is. It's a right now thing, and Cam's got a very, very legit point. Yes, he does. Yes. 
This is a bigger conversation. God, this is it's so much bigger. so very much is. It really is. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about cornerback depth. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Ramon, cornerback is a position that not a lot of people are talking about, including fans of the Steelers, to the best of my ability to gauge. It's kind of surprising to me because when you lose a name, you know, and we've yeah. spent a good amount of time on this show talking about perception and names. Right. When you lose a name like Joe Hayden, you would think that it would have some kind of comparable reaction to what, you know, losing yeah. the name that you had at quarterback mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, who the people are and what they are at this point in their careers. And I look at this group with, you know, Levi Wallace, the free agent signed yeah. uh, on one side of the outside, Akella Witherspoon, who came up with some splash over the course of the second half of last yeah. season once he got out there. Um, how do you feel about the corners? We also, I should mention Cam Sutton, obviously, and the, and yeah. the inside guys, Arthur Millette. How do you feel about this group? I, I think they're solid, but I think they're going to have to be supported up front with the rush and, and, and rush and coverage of the linebackers too. Like that's just where I'm at. They're, they are where we were as a young group as offensive line. They got to grow. And, and I just hoping that isn't a whole lot of growing pains because again, you missed the name of Joe Hayden. Now, say what you want to, even when Joe came to us as a, as a, as a veteran at that point, like super veteran at that point, he still played well. And I almost be, I don't think it's a bad take to say that he played well the last year and the year before that also. Think about that big play he made against the Titans on that fourth down by himself making the tackle. Still the defensive play of the year. You I'm sorry. Like, With all due seriously. respect to TJ and, and Cam and everybody else, Joe's tackle – uh, on a tight end, oh, yeah. Okay, we we joke about the you know lifting weights and the guns and everything. That's <laughs> that that tackle's made in the weight room. Yeah, it just it is. is. Joe was that strong. That, that one moment in which you actually need to use the weight room because you know how it is. Most of it's cerebral DK or most most of it is technique. But Joe got big right there, and because of that, like Joe may have had one or two plays, but they didn't pick on him the way they did all the other guys too. And you, you, it's funny you mentioned that man. I saw a Sports Illustrated article this morning that linked. You would talk about names, right, DK? We talk about names all the time. Xavier Xavier Rhodes was linked to Pittsburgh as maybe a potential signing later in camp. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, if, if we're talking about just name and veterans, like Pittsburgh has always had the type of veteran in that room, DK. Whether it's a guy like Joe Hayden or whether it was Will Gay or whether it was uh, Bruton from, from Alabama, remember? Or Denver. He played at Denver. I mentioned his college team. They've always had one or two older veterans in that group, whether it's guidance or whether it's just a name we trust. You know, it's like DK Pittsburgh Sports. It's a name you trust oh, and you geez. can go to for something good. You see what you I'm know, saying? Like I, Xavier I do, Rose was and, and, a guy. And that's actually what, what what leads me back to Joe because Joe's out there, okay? Yeah. Yep. And Joe, through his agent, is, you know, putting out feelers to, to reporters that, well, there yeah. are offers on the table and we're going through them, but there might not be, okay? There might not be. The fact is... Uh, the one thing that you can't bluff yeah. in these equations is, are you signed or are you not signed? Because if you're yeah. not signed, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to believe that uh, on the 7th of July, you're sitting there with your pick of offers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you're the Steelers and they still have uh, cap space and they still have need for depth at corner, would you yeah. consider offering Joe and bringing him back? Um, like in a Vinny kind of way, in, in, any kind of way. I, I think it's it's not a bad situation. If you got Joe playing a spot position, if you really feel really good about Akilo or or, or, or Trey Norwood or any of the young guys, then and, then you roll with them. You let them have it. Levi Wallace. You let them. You roll with it. Okay, but. If that's not the case, then I think it's not a bad take to bring Joe in. What do you What do you have to lose at this well, point? Well, I, I, you know who would object? Who? And he'd do it in a quiet, respectful way. Talk to me. Danny Smith. Because of special teams reasons? Yeah. yeah. You're not putting Joe Hayden on your special teams. No, you're other, not. Other than the kick block, obviously. Well, yeah. Other than, <laughs> yeah, punt block. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Other it, than it, that, it, you're, it, not, you're not putting him on kick coverage. You're not putting him on kick returns. And and Danny Smith needs to have X number of backups at certain positions. 
in uh, order to do you see what I'm saying? And you're gonna say, as far well, as right, positionally out, though. Go ahead. If, if if I can say positionally though, as far as having Joe on the roster, um with 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 being a guy that can make a play or two, because he has done it every year he's been in Pittsburgh. You know, wh- where are we with, with the history of the young guys that's on the roster right now of making those type of plays? Now, do you rob Peter to pay Paul in the sense of taking a position away from another room just to keep him in instead of those four, those three t- active quarterbacks? Do you keep two and have the seven round kid on, on, on practice squad? You know, like that's where you are as far as trying to balance out that roster. So I'm glad I don't have to do that. Omar, hey, good job trying to do that this year. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 really the thing. I, I, yeah. I just can't I, I can't say enough about. Joe Hayden and, and the way he performed in Pittsburgh. But I also know that, you know, at minicamp when we were interviewing um, the assistant coaches, the positional coaches, and yeah. they're speaking of Joe in the past tense. Oh, you know, and they're saying, yeah, we it's know fair. what Joe meant to us and dot, dot, dot. And you're going, really, yeah, that's really? That's that, that's that, that's a little different. You yeah, know? <laughs> you, you don't want that, man. Uh, that's that's the telltale sign right there, is it not? Yeah, it is. When we come back, the only segment that matters. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. The only segment matters is the Hey Moan segment. And today's entry comes from Dave Shipley. And he's referring to the discussion that we've had here this week about which current Steelers uh, or recent past Steelers uh, are headed for Canton, and Dave asks, is James Harrison a lock? I think he should have been Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. And, you know, D- Dave, that's a hard one. Yeah, that Super Bowl MVP in and of itself is an interesting debate, okay? Yeah, it is. <laughs> because there's San Antonio, there's Ben, and yeah. then there's James, and if any of the three got it, you would have been like, yeah, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Santonio got it that year, right? He did. Instead of James, man. Uh, no, I'm all right this- with it. I'm totally all right with it because when you become the the very obvious go to receiver on yeah. such a magnified drive mm-hmm. on the drive of your life, and the other team can't do anything yeah. to stop stop you yeah. i'm sorry but that is more about the wide receiver than it is about the quarterback it is but that play is boy they needed oh. that play and he made it from james like and the story behind how it happened you hadn't seen just google that yeah. uh, as far as the way they broke that play down and actually started installing that play in the defense from that moment on like it, imagine it, it's it's the the, the james it, it's the first 0.8 seconds of that sequence yeah. is what nobody talks about. They all talk about the 100-yard run, and they mm-hmm. should. It's spectacular. It's yeah. football history. It is. Okay? But but it's almost as if it's accepted that, well, Kurt Warner just made a mistake. He, <laughs> yeah. he, just, he just dropped back and uh, didn't see Harrison there and just threw it between the nine and the two. And that is not at all what no, happened. No, no, it's not. Again, go go search that because that history lesson is worth your time if you're still a fan. And if you're here, you are still a fan. Um, but OK, let's, let's go that route then. James uh, was done playing ball in 2017. I think it was his last year. So b- b- because of that, he's now five years out. I think this new ballot of players coming out, he should be on that list. Whether he's a first ballot or not, I personally think he could or should be just because of the journey and how he took the league by storm, DK, as far as that goes, man, uh, in his career. He dominated an era. I told you, that's how I judge who gets in as far as the, the Hall of Fame. He dominated an era. I'm looking at it right now from 2007 all the way up to 2011. That's one. That's five years of dominance when you look at what he did as far as the accolades. The one thing that may kind of hurt him in the sense of what he did or did not do, DK, is that he still played a good little bit after he was done. And from that point, his sack total kind of went down a little bit. The tackle total kind of went down a little bit. But he still made plays in spot positions. Yeah, he before- did. Uh, you got to let, let, let me let me let me interject here, please. One okay, thing. Go ahead. I actually think that his time in New England will help him in this cause. Here's why. 
Okay. He was seen, and rightly so, as such a freak of nature at that phase of his career for his age and the fact that he was going he was taking grown offensive linemen who were 10 12 younger than him and just discarding them like yeah. Lou Ferrigno you yeah. know painted green and 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 I thought that actually burnished his brand you know he wow. was now he was away from the Steelers and their system and their mystique and he's there and he's brought back and you think wow what's this guy got left this is crazy he's 900 years old what's he doing yeah. but then he just kept doing it like you said it was in spurts but it was in really dramatic spurts remember like he'd have it like was. three sacks like that in one half and you'd go what the heck is this Ooh, yeah yeah that's, that's that's very true he he still continued to to push the envelope of being a great so yeah I completely agree with you DK on that but in, in terms of getting in yes I don't know if they're gonna let him be a first ballot simply because you know the NFL voters are very finicky when it comes to Canton man I say he does get in a hundred percent gets in man his his career total tackles total sacks are uh at the 84 and a half so that puts him in that conversation DK uh also defensive player of the year all pro two years first team man uh I recently saw he was um fourth in MVP league voting the year he won defensive player of the year that's a hell of a career, DK, in any way you stretch it. And just the journey of being an underdog from, you know, the the um, uh, him being an underdog as far as being undrafted, multiple teams, you know the whole story behind it. James Harrison, to me, is a Hall of Famer, and I'll be glad when he gets that gold jacket. Yeah, I mean, football people love those stories. And remember that it's football people doing the voting. And can I say something, too? And he softened his image slightly because I think yeah. he is doing some acting. He's doing he's doing the media push a little bit, DK, with being involved in that era. Like yeah. he still tackled the guy on the commercial, but he's a face that you know but now. The you commercial know was awesome. It was good. <laughs> the uh, commercial uh, was awesome. That's a scary uh, movie, right yeah, there. Yeah, and by the way, for anybody who wonders, it's not. I mean, there are media people involved in, in the voting, but it's not the way it is in baseball, where it's just a you know, like. And I'm involved. I'm one of the baseball Hall of Fame voters, and when you, it's just we get envelopes and we fill them out. It's more of a process. Everybody comes into the same room at the Super Bowl site, and they talk about it and they make cases. It's a little bit more of a personal process. So no one at, in that setting, Moan, is going to yeah. say, "Yeah, but James was mean to me once." Okay, <laughs> James has been mean to every one of us, myself included, at some <laughs> different point or other in our lives. Okay, and, who's and, ever and, been around the Steelers? And for Claire, I wasn't talking about his attitude. I was just speaking on the fact that we see his face on TV. Meaning, no, I know what you meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But no, yeah, James, James Harrison. Has a bad day. James Har- James Harrison <laughs> made a lot of people's days bad on yeah, and off the field. Wow. Let's do another one of the. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, on yesterday's show. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> suggested that we were going to talk about Dan Moore today, and then. Cam goes and blows that up by yeah. by by texting Moan. So we 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 committed today to Cam. Tomorrow, for real, we will yeah. talk about Dan Moore. Yeah, we will absolutely.